Today we are going to look at six cases that focus on blood sugars. And so I want to thank you for coming to join me today. We're only going to be together for about 90 minutes. And I hope you've blocked off 90 minutes as well because uh, we are going to fill the full 90 minutes. I've probably put too much information, too much content in the webinar today, but that's just a problem I have. It's one of my faults. You'll get the most out of it if you play all in with me today. So turn off your cell phone, log out of Facebook, get ready to take notes. And I'm actually just taking my own advice here and turning the ringer down on my phone so I can't hear it. There we go. And, um, and I, I want to ask you to do me a favor as well. Now, how scary could a favor be? We're online. I can't see you. You can't see me, right? It's not going to be anything that's risky. But this is the favor. It's a whole lot easier for me to teach to an invisible audience when we have a lot of interaction. So I'm going to ask you to be doing things like to type in answers or to participate in polls. Really easy stuff. Are you willing to do that with me? Are you willing to play all in and to really commit to this next 90 minutes to get the most you can out of it? So I'm gonna give you a ton of information. And if you're not playing all in, you might as well just log off right now and forget about it because you won't get your value. So if you're, if you're in for this, I want you to type in the chat box, I'm all in. I will give you just a moment to get that typed in. I'm all in. Yay! Yay! Awesome. I'm glad. This is wonderful. Fabulous. So regardless of whether your specialty is nutrition or herbology, I know you're going to leave our session today with information you can use with your clients. One thing I've learned in my nearly 40 years in the wellness industry is that people who are good at what they do keep learning. People who think they know it all quit learning and they get stagnant. So congratulations for being here today. I'm going to encourage you to stay with me to the very end. I've got some exciting news to share with you as well. And I'll give you a little hint here. It's something that a lot of you who have been frequent visitors with me have asked for over the years. Or rather over the years. I've only been doing these for about six months this way. So over the past six months. So you'll be excited for this. But I do want to get to know you a little bit right off the top be, so I can tweak this presentation on the fly and make sure that it is going to meet your needs and your expectations. And so to do that, we are going to pop into a poll. And I would love it if you would tell me what training you already have in holistic wellness. So you should be hopefully seeing the poll on your screen. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Awesome. So all of you have nutrition. Some of you have herbology. There's a bit of homeopathy mm. and some body work and energy work. Excellent. Thank you very much. That is wonderful. So this is how those polls, um, that poll came out. Fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing. And that is called playing all in. I'm glad you're with me already. Super, super. All right. So I, I want to find out from you um, as well. One more poll just as we're getting started here. And I know some of you have been with me previously for webinars, but, you know, we do these fresh every time. Oh, darn. You know, I'm technologically, I may not be the the best person on the face of the planet here. There we go. Here we go. We're, uh, oh my goodness, it's not letting me into my other polls. No, I didn't. My apologies for this. Um, I am trying to let it get, let me into another poll. And it is saying it doesn't want me to. We've done that. So now we're coming back to here. There we go. That's what I wanted. Sorry about that. So um, what training do you have in iridology already? This will also help me to know 
how to how to couch what I'm talking about today. So hopefully you're seeing that on your screen. What training do you have in iridology already? Lovely. We've got a new person. And even if you've been with me five times before and you've answered this question before, please answer it again. Be all in with me. We've got someone who's brand new, someone who does constitutional. And we're a small group. There's only three of you on with me today. And so someone hasn't voted. And so, <laughs> I'd love it if you would. If you just take a moment, click off what your experience is. And we'll give you another like second and a half to do that. All right. So we've got newbies as well as people who've been with us for quite a while or have been doing iridology for a while and have been certified. So that is excellent. That is excellent. You're probably facing some challenges in your business. And I'd love it if you take just a moment and type in any challenges that you have. If you're a practicing nutritionist or herbalist or homeopath or naturopath, are you having some challenges in your business? And I promise these inf this information does not go beyond where we are here. It's just for you and me. And so if you're having challenges, would you just type in what those challenges are? I'm going to share with you three challenges that, that I've seen a lot of new people have. And, um, and it's, um, they're pretty universal. Okay. <clears throat> Michelle says she has problems finding new clients. Yeah, that's a common problem. And depending on where you are on the face of the planet, that can be partially a marketing issue. It can also be partially an economy issue. Where I'm at, the economy is really suffering. I'm in the middle of what we call the oil patch. We have a lot of have uh, major oil corporations in this city only with the last changes or some changes that somebody in OPEC or something made two or three years ago we've had in a city of just about one and a quarter million we've had 250,000 jobs lost because of the changes that had happened and so that has really hit the economy here you lose those oil patch jobs and you lose jobs in restaurants and hospitality and medical and dental and and I've talked to naturopaths who've got 40 years under their belt and they're saying their business is down by 50% over the last two years. So that's a challenge. Rita says, no challenges. She loves her job. I'm so glad to hear that, Rita. That's lovely. Okay. Awesome. So let's look at some of the challenges that I know about. Not knowing exactly where to start in your recommendations or how to set therapeutic priorities. And actually, Michelle, I'm going to come back to your issue of new clients in just a moment. What happens here is we know a lot. We've done a lot of schooling, you and I have. We've got a lot of training under our belts. And we know a lot. And sometimes it means, a lot of times, it means that we're with a new client and we're, we've done a, an intake questionnaire or we've find, found a way to assess them. And our brain is going so many different directions that we have problems finding a starting point and setting a plan for how we're going to walk this client through maybe six or eight or 10 sessions where we're guiding them to better health and we're teaching them along the way. The second challenge that we often have is that we want to give really good value to our clients. And so we think that we are giving them more value if we give them more time and don't charge them for it. So we see them, we do that intake interview, we go away after that intake interview, we've maybe given them a starting point, something to work on, but then we go and we may spend two or three or four hours of our own time unpaid doing research, putting together a beautiful report of everything this client needs to know for the rest of their life forever and ever, and when we meet with them again, we fire hose them with all of this information. And so not only have we invested time that we're not getting paid for, but now we're giving them so much information that they don't come back after the second consultation. 
and I'm going to tell you that this is not your fault. Totally not your fault because in nutrition school, you were taught to write elaborate case studies. You weren't taught to create a therapeutic sequence, right? Even um, in my original iridology training, I was taught to do a complete reading from front to back without taking a breath. Okay, but that is way too much information to spew onto any client at one time. And so when the clients don't come back, it's because they've either, they're so overwhelmed, they could never do it all. They could never be that perfect, so why bother? Or they think they've grabbed the one or two key pieces of information that they think they need, and they don't need you now. Okay. And neither of those serve your client at all. Point number two doesn't serve anybody because you're spending a lot of your own time that you're not being paid for. And it's not that we're mercenary, it's just that we all have bills to pay. And so we need to be paid fair value for the time we are spending on our client's behalf. So as we do this, as we look at this, this one, Michelle, is the one that often makes it hard to find new clients. We attract a new person and we scare them away, right? And as we scare them away, then we have to find a new person rather than bringing that person in, giving them the right amount of homework and giving them an idea of where we're going next and going next and going next so they can see the progression, they can see how we're building and they start to play all in for themselves. Now, how do I know all of this? Well, I've already alluded to it. I've been there myself. You should have seen the programs I gave my clients when I was first starting out. All my stars. They'd book an hour, three hours later, we'd finally be saying goodbye. I would do those front to back iris readings, take hours to do them with the client sitting there, or I would do it on my own and then go over it completely with them sitting there when they came back in. No one taught me how to do this sensibly. I had to figure it out on my own. The second thing is I've interviewed a lot of nutritionists, herbalists, and other holistic practitioners, and just about every one of them have been there too. This is such a common problem. So if you're there now, you're not alone, but you also don't need to stay there. So who am I? And what makes me think I can share this information with you? What makes me think I know enough? Well, th that's me, Judith Cobb. I've been a holistic health coach since 1981, master herbalist since 83, nutritional consulting practitioner since 94, natural nutrition clinical practitioner since 2016. So I'm now affiliated with two different nutrition organizations. I became a certified iridologist in 93, although I started practicing iridology much before then. And in 2006, I finally added the certified comprehensive iridology instructor designation with IPA, the International Iridology Practitioners Association, all of this alphabet soup floating around. I've been teaching wellness professionals since 1985. Now, back then, there were not very many courses. We didn't have the internet. And home phones still had cords. Just saying. Long time ago. Classes, if you did them, uh, were usually correspondence. You would receive your package by snail mail, do homework, send it in, wait for them to mark it, send it back with the next lesson. Took forever. And you didn't have the face-to-face -face interaction or the live support. But I'm, I'm also, <clears throat> excuse me, the wife of one, the mom of seven, and the grandma of seven. And I built my business while having and raising those seven kids. Our baby just turned 19, so I'm almost, we're, we are almost empty nesters, which is kind of fun in its own way. But I've made every mistake you can make in building a business. I promise you I have. I've spent a lot of money taking courses that took me nowhere. And what I learned from that is, well, that's not something I need to pursue. I spent a little bit of money studying with people who could really um, help me either increase my practicing knowledge or help me with learning how to build my business and do it well. So would it work for you if I could teach you some of what I've learned to save you time and money and frustration 
and the discouragement of making all the mistakes I've already made. If that would work for you, let's have you raise your hand. Yeah, right on. Excellent. Thank you so much. Woo, then you're in the right place, right? Fabulous. Thank you. So here's how iridology can help you. For those of you who are brand new to it, we've got some of you that are brand new with us. It can help you eliminate your intake forms, except for your waiver and release form. So important. Um, intake forms serve very little purpose. The waiver or release is legally necessary. So throw away the intake form, but keep the waiver release. Iridology will help you start creating deep rapport from the moment you start the consultation, instead of you looking down to read your intake form. Think back to the last time you went for a personal care appointment, whether it was a clinical massage therapist or a chiropractor, or maybe it was a naturopath or a medical doctor. Um, and how did that appointment start out? They put you in a room and you waited for the practitioner to come in. The practitioner comes in the room. If they're still working with paper files, they're looking down at the paper file as they come into the room. If they're working with electronic files, they might glance at you and say, hello, Maybe they even get your name right, and then they go straight to their computer, and then they're looking at their computer to read your form on the computer. There's no eye contact. There's no real rapport building going on there. We are holistic. We need that rapport. We want that rapport. We crave that rapport, and so do our clients. That rapport is so, so important that I have clients that I've been working with for 25 years, 30 years now. I remember which of my kids were babies when these clients started coming to me. And these clients say to me, um, I tell them, we can do your appointment in 15 minutes. Then they say, but I want an hour because you will listen. Okay, good, awesome. I will listen. Iridology can help you do a core assessment in less than five minutes. And our very last slide we're going to look at today, I'm going to walk you through a core assessment in less than five minutes. And you will know the right questions to ask your client, how to prioritize what needs to be dealt with first, and how to create pr uh, therapeutic priorities for the future consultations. You need to have a vision of where you want to go. You can change that vision as you work with the client, but you need a map of where you think you want to go. Iridology can get rid of that unpaid homework time. No more writing reports for you on your own time. And it'll help you to stop overwhelming your clients. Those are all things that iridology can help you do. Does that sound too good to be true? If that sounds too good to be true, that iridology could actually simplify your practice that much, raise your hand. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. So with iridology, I'm going to show you today a little bit with some case studies of how it teaches you the questions to ask, how those questions, because they are client specific, help to build rapport very quickly without wasting a lot of time. And they help you to laser in on what you need to be lasering in on with that client. All right, first off, you do need to know what kind of equipment you need. Now this is easy. You need one of these, just kidding. Just kidding. If you've got $5,000 in your back pocket and you're already certified and you know you love iridology, then yes, you need one of these. But for those of you who are just starting out, do not do this. Do not go out and spend big bucks on equipment for a science that you don't even know if you like or not. Now, I think you'll love iridology, but I worked with a, a student about eight years ago. She was a naturopath in New York. And she had been certified by another instructor years previously, certified as an iridologist, but he had not taught her how to integrate iridology into her practice. He had only taught her iridology. This is what you see. This is what it means. Figure it out from there. She had purchased an iridology camera through him and it had sat still in its original packaging, never opened, in the closet in her office for all those years. She came and studied with me, and by the end of our second lesson, she sent me an email the next day and said, I opened up my camera, 
I'm taking photos. This finally makes sense. Wow. Now, for those of you who are just starting out, not $5,000, but about 50 bucks. You need a good magnifying device. This is an 8X jeweler's loop and a good LED pen light. Now you want this setup and you want this one as well, a lighted magnifier. This one I just bought off Amazon, I love it. It's got a 3X, a 5X and a 10X powered lens. So it's interchangeable, these little clips here, let it go and you put, put a different lens in. Why do you need both? When you're looking at an iris up close and personal with magnification and light, you need to be able to move the light. Um, sometimes you need to move the light independently of the magnification to cast shadows and to see different textures and things in the eye. So if you've got one of a setup like this and a setup like this, you've got the best of both worlds for about 50 or $60. So this is what I suggest you do is start off with this kind of equipment as you get to where you know you love iridology and uh, you can see that it's going to be a benefit to you in your business which might take you the duration of our iridology certification program plus a few months then i would say at that point that's when you want to invest in some solid equipment but i'll tell you i still use both of these in my appointments i take pictures of every client's eyes but for quick little I want to look at this. I want to look at that. If I don't want to boot up my computer and load their photos onto my computer screen, I just use these. Or if I'm working with a young child, a little in, uh, child that's under two years of age, I will just use one of my handheld sets, right? So you do need them and cheap like borscht, as we like to say, easy, easy. All right, so we're gonna do another little poll here. Let's hope I can get this to work better. There we go. What kind of equipment do you need to start doing iridology? Just gave you those answers just and check as many answers as you want to here. Do you need a microscope? Do you need a pen light and a magnifying glass? Do you need a lighted magnifier? Do you need a telescope? Do you need a stethoscope? And I hope I set that up that you could choose more than one correct answer because there is more than one correct answer. Although I'm really pleased because everybody who's answered so far has chosen a correct answer. All right, well, let's close that. One person said a pen light, a magnifying glass, uh-huh. And one person said a lighted magnifier. Yeah, those are both correct answers. Well done. Thank you for that. Let's do a quick review of the endocrine system because that's where we're focusing today, taking you back to whatever you did for anatomy and physiology. With the endocrine system, we have all of these different glands that secrete their hormones directly into the bloodstream. And they typically usually work on some kind of what I call a negative feedback or a positive feedback loop. So it's like a thermostat that either kicks in when, when the hormone level gets to a certain level the thermostat shuts the production off, or in some cases, such as hormone levels during labor and delivery, um, as the hormone levels climb, they are not shut off. They're allowed to continue to climb to facilitate uh, labor and get that baby out. So we've got pineal, pituitary, and hypothalamus, thyroid and parathyroids, thymus, pancreas, adrenal glands, ovaries for the men, women, testicles for the man, and during pregnancy, we have the placenta. Now, we also know more recently that there are other tissues and organs in the body that have endocrine functions, the heart, the gastrointestinal tract, the kidneys, the skin, adipose or fat tissue um, are all tissues that have endocrine functions as well. So as we work with iridology, we're going to really focus on these case studies that what is the person's history and what questions do we need to ask them to come up with the right answers for them. So I'm interested to know as we're talking about blood sugar specifically, how do you currently assess for blood sugar? What do you, what tools or skills do you have? Are you, can you uh, requisition lab tests? 
Are you asking questions? Do you muscle test? What other skills do you have that you would use to assess for blood sugars? Okay, sorry, I set that one poll up, Ron, and it would let you only put in one answer. So good for you for getting right answers on that one. Awesome. So Sandra uses muscle testing, blood work, fluids, IQs, and questions about the history. Good job, Sandra. Good choices all. Michelle looks at their body. Michelle, what do you look for when you're looking at their body? What what would you see that would make you think blood sugar issues? You're looking at their, their midsection, their stomach area. Okay, and what are you looking for there? Because I'm going to hold your feet to the fire here. What are you looking for there at that, in that midsection? Just give her a minute to do her lightning fingers. Excess fat bloating the shape. Excellent. Okay, all good answers. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Let's do a quick review now moving on into the iridology mode of things that we covered in our free webinar a week ago. First off, we talked about pancreatic pigment. So this is pigment that shows up in the iris and it tells us that there's that there may be genetic imbalances or there may be acquired imbalances. It's important as an iridologist that you monitor your client's eyes at least annually. If you have a camera, it's a good idea to do annual photographs. And the reason I say that is uh, there have been so many different schools of thought on this, but where the current beliefs are with iridology is here. And that is that pigment can be inherited or it can be acquired. So this person may have been born with this pigment right here and this pigment right here. But over their lifetime, they may have done things to their body that has allowed this pigment to accumulate. <coughs> pigment like this that is probably inherited tells us that um, there is a genetic risk in that area. Pigment that we can prove because we've done annual photos has acquired over time tells us about a problem that is active now. Okay, so that's a really important distinction. And this is why it's important for us to keep really good records. And again, if you don't have a camera, then when you learn iridology in detail, you can at least make detailed notes about it. You know, you would describe this eye as lymphatic with a strong central heterochromia with dark brown pigment at that's about 7, 720 ish, 7 to 720, another fairly dark brown pigment between 5 and 515. And, you know, this would be in zone 5, 4, 5, and this is a zone 4. And when you've got that kind of detail as an iridologist, you know exactly, when, when you understand that language, you know exactly what you're looking at. This is something that I do in my iridology courses, is I will periodically just pull an iris that I can see, but I don't put on the screen for my client and my students rather, and I will describe it to them in minute detail, the best detail I can. And then when we're done, I will show them the picture and I will have them do a, a smartphone picture of what they drew and send it to me really quick. And it's amazing how accurate they are, right? So even without a camera, you can learn to take really, really detailed descriptions down and write them down so that you can track progress on things. Now, some eyes um, have no extra pigments, but there can be other markings like this that depending on where it's sitting will tell you that there could be an issue there. We always want to ascertain color of the eye and pigment color with either really white, like LED light, or with natural daylight. This is so, so important. Because if you're using a pen light that has a yellowish hue to it or a bluish hue, it's going to mess up your images. It's gonna mess up what you see. 
This eye is polyglandular. We talked about how we have all of these different petal shapes and they are attached to this line that comes around here. Polyglandular can mean several things. It can mean a greater risk of pancreas imbalance. It can mean a greater risk of thyroid issues or a greater risk of adrenal issues. So we want to find two or three markers, two or three indicators that are all pointing to the same area. We call that triangulation, right? Like a GPS, you want three satellites to help guide you with your GPS. We want two or three markers pointing to each problem before we define it as a, a real risk. The last marker we talked about a week ago was the fermentation sign. It's this and this. So it's a dot at the end of a blood vessel. Usually the blood vessel is somewhat engorged. The dot is dark blue or often gets into black. You often see some fuzziness or some brown haloing around it. And this very specifically is acquired. This shows you what's happening in the body now, and it suggests problems with carbohydrate metabolism and a greater risk of yeast or fungal infections. So as we're doing some case studies today, I want you to remember that not everything shows up in an iris because the iris is largely genetically determined and people can earn problems that they genetically did not have a weakness for. Right? I can take a Rolls Royce, wouldn't I love to, and drive it into the ground by not doing lube jobs and oil changes. But I can also take my 2005 Chev Cavalier and keep it running really well. It may not be pretty, but it runs really well and it's reliable because it gets lube jobs and oil changes. It gets the maintenance. And so that's something that we need to keep in mind here. Just before we do that, I want to just let you know that the Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology course starts January 17th and runs till mid-June. And we have choice of two course times, 11 a.m. or 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So I don't know what time zone you're in, but today's webinar started at 10.30 Mountain Time. So that gives you, and it's 11 a.m. Mountain Time now, so look at your clock and see what your time difference is. And I limit these classes to no more than five to 10 students per class because I really believe in high touch and making sure you have lots of time to ask questions. So the big difference between this, the course that's coming up and what we're doing right now is in the course, I will unmute your microphones for the entire sessions, right? So we can have free dialogue back and forth. That makes the learning even that much better. All right, let's do our first case study. This is a male, age 24. He is recently from Taiwan, and um, he's very slender, quite petite. <coughs> I don't know if men like to be described as petite or not. He likes his sugar. His diet is substandard. He does a mix of whatever he can do really easily, that is traditional Taiwanese, and the worst of North American the absolute worst. And this mixture of Asian and North American is really, really bad for blood sugar risks. The four genetic groups that are at the highest risks for blood sugar disorders are Latinos, African American, Native American, and Asian American. If when these people, uh, if when people who are not native to North America come over, if they would keep eating in their traditional ways, they would probably be fine, but they don't. They tend to mix the easy from their own culture with the lousy from our culture, and they end up in deep, serious trouble because of it. So, brown eyes. Brown eye rides like this suggest primary liver and blood risks with some increase in blood sugar risks. His eyes are polyglandular. Remember we talked about the petal shapes. In a dark brown eye, it's harder to see these because there's enough pigment that it's veiling the fiber. So he's polyglandular and that alone suggests an increased pancreas, adrenal or thyroid risk. I put some arrows in here 
And some of them actually showed up and some of them didn't. That's really weird. Oh, no, they're there. They're just hidden by this thing. This is a pancreas zone. This is a pancreas zone and this is a pancreas zone. The fact that he has a petal shape or a lacuna, as we call them, in each of those three pancreas zones with brown eyes tells us he's at significant risk for blood sugar issues. So I asked him about his family history. Was there any family history of diabetes, of blood sugar problems, of thyroid problems? Um, because, you know, the thyroid is always out of balance if the blood sugars are. That is an absolute guarantee. And he said there was no family history of anything like this. And that might be because all of the rest of his family is still back in Taiwan. And they are eating traditional Taiwanese. Okay, and so I had to kind of read him the riot act about being a responsible young man in a foreign country and how he needed to get his act together diet-wise. Now, what are some dietary things that you would recommend for someone like this who, um, again, was raised on typical Taiwanese, but is now mixing the worst of North America? I'd like you to type in three suggestions, three very specific suggestions. I, I'm not looking for, I get in to eat more vegetables. I want a specific amount, like how many, how much vegetable in a day? Um, any specific vegetables that would be more helpful or be really precise in this, just like you would teach him because he doesn't know anything about nutrition. And complicate the matter is that English is his second language and he's only been speaking English for about four months now. So you've got to be very simple, very concise. What are three dietary recommendations you would make for him? And each of those recommendations, you should be able to say in two or three words at the most. <coughs> typity type, type, typity type, type, right? You know, looking at him, he doesn't look like he's got a problem. And so what we're really trying to do is prevent problems, right? We're trying to avert problems. Protein, yeah. So we want him eating protein. We want him eating protein three or four or five times a day. So we're going to need to teach him about protein. Greens, absolutely. We want him to eat leafy greens. So we're going to teach him what would he be buying at the grocery store? And what would the packaging look like? Because, again, he's fairly new to the country. And how much of each package would he be eating every day? And healthy fats. So we're going to have to be very specific here and tell him, teach him, about the kinds of fats that we want him to be eating. Which fats are good, which fats are not good. So Sandra adds to that higher protein, green leafy vegetables, reduce or ultimately cut out junk, sugary snacks and junk, junky foods. Absolutely, brilliant suggestions. So we're going to get very specific and have him walk us through a day of his foods, have him tell us everything that goes into his mouth and then we can be very precise and say, um, the two cans of Coca-Cola a day, we need to get rid of those and replace that with two cans or two glasses of water. The uh, bag of potato chips every day, we want to replace that with a uh, plateful of celery and carrots, right? So we want to be very specific and give him precise things to do. Limit the takeout foods. Yeah, at 24, yeah, probably eating a lot of that. Maybe an EFA supplement. Absolutely, he might need that too. Avocado, olive oil, and nuts for healthy fats. Love those suggestions. That's the kind of stuff that when you're working with iridology, you want to do because the eyes give so much information. You want to distill it down to very simple, very precise things so that they're not thinking, oh, I can't eat anything and I have to eat the whole produce department in one day. Right, so be specific. I love the specificity, that's a hard word to say, that you've offered here, brilliant. What we know is that there are things that mess up blood sugar balance. So smoking, smoking in and of itself has been found to increase the risk factors for metabolic syndrome, which includes insulin resistance, in both men and women. 
and they've shown that it impairs insulin action. So what we need to do, and this gentleman doesn't smoke, but that is another thing. Thank goodness smoking is mostly on the decline. Excessive alcohol intake, well, we already know what alcohol does for blood sugars. We know that from men, excessive means anything more than two alcoholic beverages a day. For women, it's more than one a day. So not much for the real world there, really fairly low levels, but we know that the alcohol messes up the blood sugars. Lack of physical exercise. Again, we know that 30 minutes of walking a day reduces the risk of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, by 30%. How easy is that? High fat, high refined carb diet is bad. Fizzy drinks and alcohol, white sugar, refined sugar, white flour, and even excessive red meat consumption. So are you starting to see how you could use iridology in your practice? We've only done one case study. If, if you're seeing how you could, a glimmer, just a glimmer of how you could use iridology in your practice, would you raise your hand? All right, thank you. Okay. Nutrition to support healthy blood sugar levels. You've touched on a lot of these, and I am grateful that you've hit them so well. Leafy greens, nuts and seeds, protein, vegan or not, water, whole grains, and fiber. On the mineral side, we want magnesium, we want chromium, we want vanadium or vanadyl sulfate, we want melatonin, we want the antioxidants. Now, vanadium or vanadyl sulfate, any idea what that's all about? What benefit does it play? What role does it play? Do you know anything about it? It's a micro trace mineral and it's one that doesn't get a lot of stage time. I'll give you just a second to type in yes you know or no you don't know. And if yes, tell me what it is you know. I'm just gonna grab a sip of water while you're doing that. And while you're doing that, um, there was a study done that showed that um, the, that there are many vitamins and minerals, the ones on this list in particular, that, that can control blood sugar balance positive or impact blood sugar balance positively. Okay, so vanadium or vanadyl sulfate, since that seems to be drawing a blank for everybody, Woo. Okay, make a note of this then. Um, is a trace element that increases insulin sensitivity in type 2 diabetes. So if you're working with someone who's got type 2 diabetes, you can give them vanadium or vanadyl sulfate in things like parsley and dill weed. Uh, Sandra says she can't remember. Well, good. Refresh your course for you then here. Sandra, well done. So uh, again, so a parsley and dill weed, amongst other things, contain vanadium or vanadyl sulfate. And so if you get your client to incorporate capsules of that or use it generously in their foods, it can help to reduce insulin sensitivity in type two diabetes. Did you also know that if melatonin is low, it increases the risk of developing type two diabetes? Yeah. Interesting, right? Michelle says black pepper does that too. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Michelle. So, you know, as we look at, at the iridology course that's coming up, here's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to create programs right in your sessions and eliminate unpaid homework time, just like I'm showing you in case studies today. You learn how to do a base assessment in five minutes or less without lengthy intake paperwork, save time, and do a better intake assessment. We practice this time and time and time again in the scope of the course. You learn how to ask only questions that are relevant to your client's needs. How to prioritize the problems your client needs help with. Your client will come in with a shopping list of things they want help with. Your job is to use iridology and asking the questions to understand those problems better and then to begin creating solutions based on what your client has said they need help with, and what you see in their eyes, and what you see they need help with. Oftentimes, what they think they need help with is only a symptom. 
and what you need to help them with is a root cause. You'll learn how to connect what you know about nutrition and herbology to what you discover using dynamic iridology. And you'll learn how to do a deeper assessment for more direction and understanding of your client's needs when needed. So how are you going to learn all that? Well, we're going in the course, I will teach you iridology beginning to intermediate, which is a really solid level to do a really, really excellent professional iris reading. I'll also teach you sclerology. And both of these you will learn at a level to prepare you for the IPA iridology certification exam if you choose to do it. Now that's administered by IPA and they have an additional fee for it. So you don't have to certify and we're going to talk about that later. Let's do another case study here. This is a client who's been a client of mine for nearly 10 years now. She first came to me when she was 74. And she came in as a type 2 diabetic who was on metformin. She was not controlled by diet at all because her diet was really lousy. She was starting to pack on weight. And um, she did monitor her blood sugar several times each day so she would know how whether to take her metformin or not or how much she could cheat or not or how her last cheat had affected her blood sugars. She was very active, very busy, huge social life. She's single, divorced, and um, just never stays at home for more than 10 minutes if she can help it. But her diet was really lousy. She said her middle name is, I don't cook. She lives alone. She doesn't like cooking. I get it. She said she stopped cooking when her last child left home. If she can't buy food ready-made at the deli, she doesn't eat. So everything comes from the ready-to-eat deli. Add to this that she had developed urgent and uncontrollable diarrhea that was ruining her life. She couldn't leave home because she sometimes couldn't even make it to the toilet in her condo. And we know that that bowel issue could have been at least in part due to the metformin since that is a known side effect. But still, um, there was a problem. She actually had been invited to go on a three-week tour, a bus tour of Ireland and had to give her final yay or nay four weeks from our first appointment. So the pressure was on, could I help her rebalance her bowel in time for her to say yes to go on the trip? So what I noticed first off is she has a lot of dirty orange in her eye. Remember, dirty orange is one of the pigment colors that tells us pancreas could be out of balance. She has a corneal arcus. When we look up here, you can see that there's a milky film on the, on the periphery of the eye, of the iris rather, and that suggests long-standing liver enzyme imbalances that lead to blood lipid issues and triglyceride problems. So we need, know that elevated triglycerides and low HDL are both common in insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. So after looking at her eyes, I asked her if she craved sweets. And her answer was an absolute yes, doesn't everybody? Okay, then that's pretty clear. So then I asked her if she also drank juice, ate fruits, or drank alcohol. And she said, yep, she has juice every day. Oops, you've lost your sound. Okay, hopefully I come back. Uh, Michelle, do you still have sound? Michelle still got sound, so Sandra, if you're not hearing me, I can't talk to you. Okay, so you're back now. Oh, awesome, good, okay. So <laughs> she said that yes, she drank juice, yes, she ate fruits, and she, uh, and she did that because they don't need cooking. And she would have alcohol, she'd have a glass of wine occasionally if she was out with friends. Her first concerns were the bowel issue, and my concern about that was loss of nutrients and loss of fluid and electrolyte imbalance. And the second concern we both had was the metformin. Because type 2 diabetics who are on metformin almost always end up on insulin, on injectable insulin. She didn't want to go there. But she didn't know what to do. So we actually had to start at the very beginning. And I put her on a vegetable soup fast for seven days. I let her buy the broth because the deli that was 
near her home makes their own broth. So she would go and buy fresh broth and load it with vegetables. So we could pretend that she wasn't cooking because there wasn't a lot of cooking involved. And uh, we got her to do that for a full week. On day four, we had her start putting a little bit of chicken in the broth. And by day seven, the diarrhea was gone. And as we re took another week to slowly reintroduce foods, the diarrhea stayed away. Her bowels functioned fine. She was great. She was able to go on her trip. <coughs> I did suggest as we got her onto full diet that she needed to be doing protein four to five times per day. And she could buy a, a roasted deli chicken. That was fine. She could boil some eggs because that's not really cooking. We would have her um, go and buy meat and chicken pieces that had already been cooked at the deli. And we'd get her doing, she actually, I gave her a base of a recipe for some protein snacks based on nut butter. And I said, I want you to take this and work with this basic recipe and see if you can make something that would work for you. And so she took that recipe of uh, almond butter and started adding things to it, a bit of protein powder, some hemp hearts, some chia seeds, some coconut, unsweetened coconut, things like that, rolled it into a log and sliced it into to little slices like a refrigerator cookie and would use those as her protein snacks in between meals. And she loved doing that because she didn't have to use a stove. She could make enough to last the week and it worked really well. So we got her doing that. Uh, we got her um, using a protein powder that was sweetened with stevia instead of xylitol because xylitol can be risky for the gut. I'm not a big fan of, of dairy products, but because she wasn't going to go cooking a lot of protein and I didn't want her getting bored with just chicken, we did suggest using some Greek, Greek yogurt and a bit of cheese, but made sure she took a uh, protein digestive aid with that. After four weeks of doing what I told her to do, not only was the diarrhea stopped, but her blood sugars had totally stabilized. And um, as she was testing, she was finding her blood sugars were actually dipping too low with the metformin. So her doctor took her off the metformin. She lost 10 pounds and she felt great. So what we really did with her was based on this orange coloring we got her off the high sugar things like the juices and the fruits, got her onto her proteins, and it did the trick for her. So I want to do another little quick poll with you, and I want to ask you this question. What pigment colors in the eyes suggest pancreas issues? There's only one correct answer here. Good job. Okay. That's fabulous. Thank you so much. 100% right. Dirty orange, brown, or rust are your pancreas warning colors. They also can warn of a couple of other things. So registration for the course, Confident Nutritionist, is open at this website. And um, just because we call it nutritionist, if you're a herbalist, don't worry. I'm a herbalist too, right? I'm going to make sure that we include the herbs into this. And I promise you that by tying in nutrition and herbology and teaching you how to make those correlations, I will help you catapult the impact you have on your clients to the very next level. It'll be awesome. What do you get in the course? You get 20 sessions done as live webinars. So it's about 40 hours of, of class time. Each class is recorded in its entirety and posted on the student website for you to access on an as needed basis. Every topic is also presented on the website as a short video. So we cover sometimes eight or 10 topics in one class. There's that many of them. You might not need to listen to the full two hours. Maybe you got most of the topics. You just want one or two. So we record them separately as well. And you can go in and just listen to the ones you need to. They're stored on your student site for 18 months. And at the end of 18 months, you are migrated to an alumni site where the information is kept current and up to date. So you can go back in 
and constantly be reviewing if you want to. You receive a digital textbook that's made available in weekly installments, so you download it. You get cheat sheets to help you with your IRIS assessments. Now these cheat sheets end up being a synopsis of the entire class organized into a chart. I've had most of my students tell me that this is the piece that once they finish their class, this is what they keep going back to. They actually print this up, put it in plastic sleeves in a binder and put divider tabs in it and they find that it is the fastest reference that they've got. Each class we start with a review of the previous week, introduce new material, and then practice that new material and integrate everything you've learned. Lots of in-class practice and interaction every week. So if you've got questions, you can get them answered right then and there. At the end of the course, if you've attended 80% of the classes live, you get a certificate from IPA a certificate of attendance saying you did that. So that's important. Sometimes to maintain your other credentials, you have to do continuing education hours or CEUs as they're often called. And because this course is 40 hours long, many other programs will accept this as 40 hours of CEU. We have a private Facebook group for my students and my alumni and you get support, can ask questions. I will often post iridology photos there that I think are interesting and we have a little conversation about them. And we have a monthly Q&A webinar that gets recorded. So students submit questions and cases they're working on and we talk about them. That gets recorded and it gets posted to a separate Q&A site that is just for my students. So when you see all of that, you probably wonder how much is this program actually worth? What is the tuition? You might look online and find an iridology class and typically to cover 40 hours, you're going to need either two three-day weekends or you're going to need a five or a six-day week to do it face-to-face. -face. The tuition might only be seven or eight hundred dollars, which sounds like a deal. And maybe that is the right way for you to do it. Um, you know, there are some fabulous teachers teaching face-to-face, -face, absolutely. And if that's, if that is the way you want to do the program and you learn best that way, go for it. Let me present you with a different perspective on it though. How much time would you need to take off work and how much is that worth to you? $150 a day times five or six days. So that's going to cost you at least $750. And then you probably have to fly there. And so that's probably going to cost you $500 for a round trip. You're going to need a hotel. So even if you stay in a cheap hotel, $75 a night, you're looking at three or $400. And your meals, eating in restaurants or buying groceries and making food in your room, say 30 bucks a day. So you're looking at at least another $150. How's it all adding up? Yeah. So you're at least... 1775 and you haven't paid your tuition yet. And then to get from maybe where you're staying to the venue where the classes are, do you need to rent a car? Do you want to catch an Uber? How much is that going to cost you? So the other challenge I see with those kinds of courses, and sometimes we have to do them, right, is that after about day two, my brain shuts off. I just cannot absorb any more information. And so it becomes so important for us to, um, to be aware of how we learn. So if you know you want this class and you want to do it two hours at a time, once a week, so you've got time to practice, let it all set, settle in, here's what you get. For $19.95, which is about $15.95 US and your credit card company or PayPal will convert this. You get the complete course. You get support preparing for your IPA exams, part one and part two. And I gift you with an IPA student membership because you have to have a membership to do the IPA exams. Now, what if you're thinking, I want the information, but I don't want to certify right now. Maybe I don't want to certify at all. This is the exciting news. I have created an option where you only do the course. The course only, so the 40 hours of time, the Facebook support, the Q&A pages, all of that for only $14.95. And if you decide later you want to certify, great, I've got a separate package just for exam prep and support. 
IPA has is a three part exam. And with this exam, again, you have to have an IPA membership to apply to do the exam. Part one is 10 iris analyses, which I supply you with. You give them back to me, I mark your work. And then I give you an hour of private tutorial to go over that work to make sure you've done it all really well, or to catch any places that you might need some extra support. Part two of this, the exam process is one case study provided by IPA through me. You do the, the assessment, I mark the work, so it's a written assessment. Then we spend an hour reviewing that again to make sure you're solid. When I'm confident you're solid, I let IPA know you're ready. And then you apply to do the exam, send in your paperwork and your exam fee, have someone supervise you, and that has to be approved by IPA. And then you do a four hour written exam. And when you've completed all three of those successfully, then you are certified by IPA. So the first two parts are included in your tuition with me. The third part is a separate item altogether. Let's do another case study. Let's do a male age 23. Lots of young men in my life. This is another Asian. He's been living in North America since he was eight years old. He eats a lot of white rice. He loves pop, sugar, candy, and rarely eats vegetables, if ever. Okay, and so here are his problems. He's overweight by about probably 40 to 50 pounds. He is borderline obese. He's had gout since he was 17, and he struggles with depression and anxiety. According to a study published in the Revista Paulista de P Pediatria, Sao Paulo, Brazil, in 2015, elevated uric acid in children and adolescents increases the risk of insulin resistance. Huh. Another study that was published prior to that in 2012 in the International Journal of Rheumatic Disease found that serum uric acid is closely related to insulin resistance in people both with and without metabolic syndrome. So when gout is present, the risk of joint erosion increases and the risk of type two diabetes or insulin resistance skyrockets. So early, this set of eyes has a bit of a milky film starting to form over the edges. This is way too young. We don't usually see this starting until someone is over 50 years old. This is the beginnings of what we call elipemic diathesis, and it suggests a liver imbalance that will lead to dyslipidemia, so cholesterol and triglyceride issues. And while he has no hard and fast markers that suggest an increased risk of blood sugar issues, he's got, he's starting to set down the lipemic diathesis. And we know that there is a ton of research that ties insulin resistance to dyslipidemia. So I asked him about his cholesterol levels as well. And being a 23 year old man, he went, well, I don't know. All right, fair enough. But from his eyes, I know he's headed into trouble. So what we are looking at here is the dyslipidemia that we see the indications of starting in his eyes, and the uric acid that he's, that he's got with the gout tell us that he's headed straight for insulin resistance, type two diabetes. I think he's already there actually. So this is what I, I suggested since he doesn't know his cholesterol, he doesn't know his blood sugar response times or anything like that. We started it out easy. He drinks a ton of pop, usually two liters of pop a day. We reduce that to one can per day, down from two liters. He eats no vegetables, so I suggested eating two fist-sized ser servings of vegetables, no potatoes, but anything else was fair game. That was too hard. That was too hard. So we had to say, okay, well, could you cut the pop in half and do a liter instead of two liters, which is still deadly, and could you get one serving of vegetables could you go for a 30 minute walk each day when the gout is not flaring up? And so those are the things he's working on right now and he's struggling with even that. Again, being an Asian American, he's kept the, some of the traditional Asian, which is primarily the white rice, 
but he's added the worst of North America to it. And it is not good, not good at all. So as we look at these, why would you even want to study with me? Well, hopefully because you know I've been where you are. I've had those struggles of finding new clients, of scaring clients away with too much information. I understand the financial and time constraints of running a business, taking care of a family, home, friends, and other important commitments. You know, I mean, really look at this. I've done this while I've had seven children. Now my parents and my parents-in-law are in their 80s and they are not healthy. And for my parents, I am the only caregiver, right? So I get the time constraints. I get the family issues, totally. And so that is one of the reasons why I think two hours once a week is a much better idea for how to learn. And I understand there's a lot to learn about iridology and sclerology. And it's less expensive to study with a Canadian who teaches and charges, who charges in Canadian dollars. Right, right now our exchange rate, like I said, is about 80%. And that means it saves, it saves Americans 20% and Canadians aren't having to pay that extra for American dollars. Here's what some of my students have said. Michelle Davies came to me as a previously certified iridologist. She'd studied with David J. Pesek. She'd done his first three certificates and she has iridology in professional practice with Darko Purse. So she's already certified. She came into my course and she says, this is the most amazing iridology course I've taken. Wow, Judith's course is top on my list. Judith is very enthusiastic and excited as we are in the course and she has many good examples and stories to share that make the course that much more real in today's world. We're always doing real life case studies Judith's iridology course is very informative, informative, descriptive, and complete as it contains the most accurate iridology, and including sclerology, and most importantly, how to put it all together and make a proper assessment. I feel most confident in my nutrition practice now. Love it. Allison Taylor, the amount of learning is enormous and there's a lot of depth to this course. Judith's teaching is professional and easy to learn as she stops for questions, has great slides, and reviews every week. Her students are her priority, and their understanding of the information is imperative to her. There's a student website page with all the PDFs for downloading and videos to watch. The page is easily accessible. There's also a private Facebook page for questions, comments, assessments, and just keeping in touch between weeks. It's a one-of-a-kind course. I would definitely recommend this course to anyone who's even thinking of taking an iridology course. Judith is a wealth of knowledge and a fantastic mentor. I love this course and I know you will too. And last but not least for today for, for testimonials, thank you Judith, this comes from Karen Choate and I don't have her name on here. It's been such a pleasure studying under you and learning from you. I really miss our classes. But I'm looking forward to completing this component of iridology. She's actually just doing her exams now and continuing my education most hopefully with you. I've become much more comfortable with taking photos of my patients and I've begun to implement this incredible work in my practice quite successfully. It truly has helped immensely in my decisions and assessments. Thank you for sharing your skills, your knowledge and your patience. She came to me as a registered holistic nutrition practitioner, I think it was, was her designation. So she also had a lot of training under her belt. Um, just before we pop into this, this analysis, let's do another little pop quiz. <coughs> Which of the following has been shown to increase the risk of developing insulin resistance? Which one of these things shows an increased risk? Yeah, good job. Yeah, absolutely. Elevated, elevated uric acid. Perfect. 100% right. Way to go. Woohoo. I love it when my, my students are so smart. Makes me feel good. Okay. So here we are, female age 65. This is actually a, a client slash student who has been a student of mine for 35 years. But And she still comes to me as a practitioner as well for fine-tuning. Lots of stress in her life, tons of stress. 
Her mom recently passed away. She was the primary care support for her mom who was in a nursing home and the care in the nursing home was very substandard, very substandard. This woman's husband has been very sick for many years and is on the slow decline. And it's problems that the doctors can't even define. So complicated that she struggles with, how, with supporting him. She was recently in my office. Um, I hadn't seen her for quite some time. And her blood pressure was 180 over 80. 180 over 80. She said she had white coat syndrome. And I said, you may have white coat syndrome, but my goodness, we've raised our children together. Nothing to be afraid of here. So of course I had to legally tell her to go to her doctor, which she did. The doctor prescribed an angiotensin II inhibitor and an anti-anxiety medication, both. Our goal of course is to get her off these, but to help her lose some weight as well, because we put her on the biotracker which is an impedance monitor, and she is 36% body fat. Um, and it said that her metabolic age is 83. Okay, so she's really done some damage. No, and we can backtrack that damage. We absolutely can. And that's what we want to do with her. As we look at her eyes, there are, again, no super clear cut markers of pancreas issues. You know, we've got. Um, what we've got is that that beginning of the lipemic diathesis again, which suggests dyslipidemia. <coughs> we've got a circulatory ring, which suggests her circulation is probably not great, which is probably a huge reason why she had a meta age of 83. She's got a lot of training. She studied with me extensively over the years. She's done other training. She's worked in health food stores. She's been a wellness coach. She knows what to do, but with all of the stress she was under, she was actually also primary caregiver for an uncle. He passed away about five years ago, then her mom and her husband in poor health. Tons of stress, which led to a lot of poor choices in her foods, inactivity, and it's pushed her towards insulin resistance. We've got the basic colors in her eye of, of the brown pigments, so those could be pushing her that direction as well. And so we just want to be, to again though, recognize that not everything shows up in the iris. Sometimes the person has just dug the pit for themselves. But we can use things that we see in the iris to help us help them fill the pit back in. So um, she's been working through the grief of losing her mom, working through her mom's estate. She's the executor, another stress level. But she's ready and willing to get going with this. And she's got the education. She just needs me to remind her of what she already knows. And so what we did with her, because I knew she would do it, she'll do the hard stuff up front and be really happy with it. So we got her eating protein five times a day, two to three ounces five times a day. We got her actually weighing her leafy greens. And try this if you haven't done it because it's kind of mind boggling. I suggested five ounces of leafy greens a day. Holy Hannah, that is like two dinner plates stacked three inches tall. It is huge, just of greens, embellish that salad as you will. And we got her to start walking 30 minutes a day. Those are the changes we made. And those are the changes she knew she could do. We're continuing to build on that, but that was the first stop. After four weeks, and that included Christmas in the middle of it. How hard is it to stay on a program over Christmas, right? When you're the one who's doing Christmas dinner for the family, okay? So she did this over Christmas, and over those four weeks between her appointments, she lost four pounds, she lost a full inch off her waist, and she's so motivated because of that. She says her energy is starting to skyrocket. She is feeling so good already. So I was just so excited with that. And what I'm hoping we are going to see, we will not see the lipemic diathesis backtrack. It's not going to go away. But I'm hoping we can stop it where it is. That'll tell me that we've got her, her blood lipids balancing better and that we've got her holding steady. 
that we've got the liver happy. It's controlling what it can with the triglycerides, which means we can, we've got better grips as well on her blood sugar levels. And that is a good thing. So I need to ask you, because you've both got nutrition training under your belt, how do you help your clients stay on track during the sugar feast times? So I think of Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's, Easter, and depending where you are, July 1st or July 4th, as sugar feasts, right? That's when we pull out the cookies and the baking and the candy and the pop. Michelle says, make your own treats. Good answer, Michelle. <coughs> Get them making their own treats. Teach them about using whole grains or using xylitol or using stevia. Excellent. Excellent. Any other suggestions? Sandra says, use 70% dark chocolate instead of junk chocolate. Good suggestion. Good suggestion. And even there, they can find it sweetened with xylitol or stevia, and that can help them fighting the, the, the sugar cravings as well. And I love the idea of giving them something that is a treat, like the dark chocolate. Now it's a treat that, that they don't need to feel too, too guilty about. Avoid refined sugars and choose cane, honey, or maple syrup. Absolutely. Good choices. Excellent suggestions all. Thank you for sharing. But we do need to give them back something that they can actually work with, right? I've got a website called goodandnaturalrecipes.com, and I'm not saying that all the recipes on there are perfect. They are transitional. So it's to take people from white flour and white sugar into whole grains and natural sweeteners and to begin improving what they're doing. And if we can give them stepping stones like that, it can really help them to, to empower them to stay on track. Let's touch on the course just a bit again, because you now we've talked about the tuition and some of you might be saying, well, yeah, I really want to do the course, but I just don't have that much money sitting in my back pocket right now or this much in my back pocket. Do you have a payment plan? Absolutely. I love payment plans. I love spreading it out. And we all know it costs you a little bit more for doing that, but it makes it so you can afford it, right? By spreading it out. So for pay on the full meal deal, is $5.49 per payment. On the course only, it's $4.19. So maybe you can afford $5.49 a month, or maybe you can afford $4.19 a month for four payments, get it done, you're ready to roll. That is awesome. And so the payments are one a month starting, and it's timed on when you make that first payment, right? Um, and if you opt for the four pay, go to the registration page, scroll right down to the bottom, and you'll see that the full course has its own four pay link, and the course only has its own four pay link. So when is the course? You need to know this, and we touched this very lightly at the beginning. It starts the 17th of January, and it goes to late June. Now you go, why is there not a finish date there? That's because I schedule for 22 sessions. I promise you 20 sessions. And I do that because sometimes we get towards the end of the program and I think, you know, I think my class isn't solid enough, enough on this one concept. And I want to spend an extra day, an extra two hours or an extra part of a session reviewing that. Or maybe the students have been asking a lot of questions that show me that I didn't do a good enough job on a certain topic. Well, we add time onto the course and just include it in the course to make sure you've got clarity on everything you need. So late June-ish gives, gives us room for 22 sessions if we need it. We take a session or two, a week or two off in process as well because I think we all need a reading week, week once in a while. You have your choice of doing it in the in what would be my time in the morning or my time in the evening. If you're in England, for instance, six, uh, 11 a.m. here is 6 p.m. for you, which is probably a way better time to do a course than 1 a.m. for you, right? So we've picked some times that hopefully work. Also note daylight savings time is gonna change things in March for us. And so be aware of how that's going to change your class time. 
We've still got two case studies left. Female age 35. This was a really interesting case. She's got polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a part of syndrome X. It always includes insulin resistance and, and can lead easily into type 2 diabetes. Her menstrual cycles were running 56 to 60 days. And that's a problem. Michelle is asking, any green eyes? Not today, Michelle. I'm sorry, I didn't find any green eyes, um, any any of the mixed eyes for us to look at today, any of the biliary eyes. Sorry about that. Sounds like you maybe work with a lot of, of what we would call biliary or mixed people. Um, but just keep hanging with me or take the class. We do lots of green eyes in the class too. So this client, again, wants to get pregnant. The medical research shows that PCOS, you don't get pregnant. A cycle that is longer regularly than 35 days, for every week it is longer, your chance of getting pregnant goes down. So she was not going to get pregnant. She still isn't yet, but notice again, first off, we've got the brown coloration. So we know we're looking towards some liver issues potentially. We've got the beginning of the dyslipidemia. So that suggests triglyceride and cholesterol issues. And she is Asian, Asian American. And her diet was atrocious. It was not unusual for her to have a sweet roll for breakfast, chocolate bar and pop for lunch. Like, oh my stars, it was awful. And she couldn't get pregnant and didn't know why. At any rate, we backtracked her up. She's motivated, totally motivated. And as we, I got her charting her basal temperature so I could see what was happening. And we started working on her foods, got rid of the sugar, got rid of the junk, uh, got her eating protein five times a day, eating a ton of leafy salad, and walking for 30 minutes every day. Her menstrual cycle is now down to 30 days. She has a very clear-cut follicular phase and a very clear-cut luteal phase. So now we're just waiting for her husband to have another semen analysis because there was some iffy things happening with that three or four months ago. And we've been working with him as well. So we are hoping that in the next month or two, we will actually have a positive pregnancy test. So again, I'm going to ask you, do you see the benefits for integrating iridology into your practice? If you do, raise your hand. Because you know, here's how it's going to help you while you're raising your hand. No more unpaid homework time. No more writing of those really horrendous reports that nobody wants because they're too much. You'll be able to create your therapeutic sequences to help your clients be more successful and keep them coming back to continue their wellness journey, right? So important, so important. Uh, Sandra says, uh, sorry, she can't find her hand, but yes, she agrees. Awesome. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate you saying that. I was wondering why you weren't raising your hand because I didn't think you were ignoring me. Um, thank you. I appreciate knowing that. And you will be able to eliminate those lengthy intake questionnaires. You'll be able to make that intake a much more organic rapport building process. And you will develop rapport within minutes. You know, if I was asked, would ask you a question. Um, so Sandra, check, there should be a, some kind of a little pull out menu, a little arrow on your screen that when you click it, it opens a drop down menu that has the hand on it probably as well. So that might help you. With this rapport building in minutes, you know, if you are working with someone and you're asking them questions that are totally irrelevant, they're thinking you don't get it. You don't get them. But when you look at their eyes and you say, your eyes are, are suggesting this could be an issue, tell me about it. They know you're talking about them. And that develops rapport. And of course, you will be more precise in your client work. You'll get it right the first time. And that's good. Because you get it right, that creates confidence. They now have confidence in what you do. And you've taken care of the first thing on their shopping list. That gives you wiggle room to go to the next thing that you felt was an issue. Teach them how it ties into what you're working on. 
but what you need to do to really build the program for that second thing. And then rinse and repeat for the third and rinse and repeat for the fourth. And show your client how you are walking them through health concerns that they may not have even know they had, known they had, and improve their health from the ground up. Female age 27, this is a cool case. She's a registered nurse. She's been a competitive fitness, uh, okay, uh, repeating myself, sorry about that. She's been a fitness competitor. That's what I'm trying to say. Fitness competitor for four years, and for two of those years, she used steroids. Yeah, I, I was horrified. She has got so many problems now. History of bulimia, gut issues where her gut would bloat like nobody's business. No matter what she ate, no matter what she didn't eat, her gut would bloat terribly. Her energy was up and down like a roller coaster. Um, horrible, horrible energy. Now you're thinking, what does this have to do with blood sugars? I'm going to show you in just a second. Her mouth was full of cankers the first time we met, and we met about six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. She'd been constantly, constantly ill with colds and infections for the prior three months, um, colds and sore throats, and all kinds of just horrible. She's polyglandular. We used her as our polyglandular example at the very beginning. All of these closed flower petals all attached to the collarette. And so we know from that that she is prone to adrenal thyroid pancreas. We've got rust colored pigments. So we know that that increases her risk of pancreas. We've got a closed lacuna here in a pancreas zone and here in a pancreas zone. So we know she's looking at pancreas blood sugar issues. But then I looked at her sclera and I saw that fermentation sign. Remember, the fermentation sign tells us that she likely has a very current now dynamic problem handling carbohydrates, very high risk of having uh, yeast infections or some kind of fungal infection right now, right now. So I asked her about yeast and she said she didn't have a yeast infection. But, you know, I've never seen a person have a mouthful of canker sores that didn't have a yeast infection. Guarantee it, hands down. And if you've ever got someone who presents with a mouthful of canker sores, just put them on the anti-yeast protocol. And six weeks later, their mouth will be cleared up. Guarantee it. All right. And so we put her on my anti-yeast protocol, which is very strict. No sugar, no fruit, no packaged foods, lots of vegetables lots of protein. We also used the yeast fungal detox from Nature Sunshine. I had her put a drop of tea tree oil in water to rinse her mouth with, and then I'd have her spit that out, then I'd have her put a drop of tea tree oil in four ounces of water and have her drink that. We also gave her probiotic 11 from Nature Sunshine as her probiotic to begin re-inoculating herself. She came back after six weeks with a massive smile on her face because she said everything was better. And I said, well, let's go down the list. I want to make sure it really is everything. And she said, all of my mouth sores are completely gone. I have not been sick with a cold or a sore throat or anything like that in the past six weeks. My gut does not blow up anymore. I never look like I'm even two months pregnant, let alone nine months pregnant and ready to del deliver twins. My bowels are amazing. She said, I'd forgotten to tell you when I saw you last time that my bowels were sporadic. They were alternating liquid diarrhea with constipation and solid poop that I couldn't get out. She says, now I'm having two really nicely formed, easy to pass bowel movements every day. She said, I feel so fabulous can I stay on this eating program for longer? To which I said, of course you can. It's got all of your nutrients in it. We've just taken out things that were messing you up. I said, so I'd really suggest because you're doing so well on it, let's stay on it as it's written for six more weeks. And then we'll talk about how to reintroduce other foods 
but because you're doing so well, let's start reducing the supplements. Okay. And she was just so excited. But this was the dead giveaway with her symptoms and with the meager little other stuff we saw with um, the beginning of, again, the dyslipidemia here, the pigment here that suggested, and the polyglandular, that she was probably at risk for blood sugar disorders. So we haven't had a lot of time or haven't had enough time to go into all of the nitty gritty individual markings that we could. I mean, there are 14 different kinds of closed lacuna. And we certainly don't have time to do that in all these free webinars. We don't have time to go into all the specific locations and different colors and different shades of and all the different pigments and what they mean and what it means when we have color hanging out in here and an edge that looks a little rough to the inner pupillary border and things like that or what it means when the outer edge is dark or when we've got the blue haze hanging here. There's so much to teach you. We just don't have time to do that in all these free webinars. So let's do one quick, quick full analysis. This would be an intake analysis. This is the things that I would notice about this eye um, as I was chatting before I asked any specific questions. Uh, so Michelle, this is as close to a green eye as we're gonna get today, sorry about that. This eye is a lymphatic eye, which means this person has a predisposition towards elevated acid in their body which will often show up as allergies, arthritis, asthma, skin conditions, and kidney issues. So seeing the blue, I'm going to ask about those things. Any history of asthma, allergies, arthritis, kidney, or kin, uh, kidney conditions. Remember that allergies always, or if allergies are going to migrate, they're going to migrate to eczema. And after eczema, they'll usually migrate to asthma. Sometimes those two switch places. And after asthma or eczema, they usually end up with arthritis. It's a set pattern that happens almost every time eventually. Sometimes they go, they do skip the asthma and the eczema. But if they've got asthma or eczema, you know arthritis is down the road. Um, I would then look at this central area and notice that it's darker. And again, that the edge of the pupil is kind of rough and looks like someone snipped at it with scissors. I'm going to ask about protein digestion and digestion at the stomach level overall. The colors that I see in here, I am going to ask about liver, pancreas, and kidneys. The fact that we have all of these closed shapes here, I'm going to continue to ask about pancreas, adrenals, and thyroid, and I'm really going to focus on pancreas, okay, because we've got a lot going on there. I'm also going to be wanting to ask some questions about heart and circulation in that way. I'm going to ask about cholesterol levels. And I'm going to ask if they know if they have any issues with their liver, because we've got the lipemic diathesis starting, and we've got pigment that could be pancreas, liver, or gallbladder. We've got this blood vessel that actually just about circumnavigates the entire iris. That suggests that we've got some real congestion happening throughout the circulatory system. And we're going to talk about how she feels about her circulation. Are there any indications of things like that? I'm probably going to take her blood pressure as well. We see this. This is a woman who spends a lot of time outdoors. She's in her mid seventies and she's a horse lady. So she's always outdoors with her horses. And these are, um, suggest that she's damaged her sclera by exposure to the elements like that. This particular knot of blood vessels is something that she has built herself. And it suggests that there may be some questions about her kidneys. So when we look at this and we see the yellow in here, it tells us we have to ask about kidneys. We see things like this little loop-de-loop -loop down here, which is going to make us, again, take her blood pressure for sure, because it often will suggest that there are some blood pressure issues brewing. And, and what we see in the sclera can be warning us of things that are building right now that aren't actually, she's not even aware of. They can be subclinical when we see them in the sclera. And so when we see things in the sclera, we take those very seriously because it tells us what the body's capable of now. All right, so um, 
if I was working with this person for the very first time today, I would ask about her protein digestion, her blood sugars, her energy, inflammation throughout the body, circulatory health, and kidney health. From that list of things and from her answers, I would create one or two recommendations to support her digestion, because if the digestion isn't working, nothing else is going to work. And I would maybe toss in one or two supplements as well. Whatever I made for, for suggestions for diet, for lifestyle would be very specific. So this woman drinks a ton of coffee and she won't give it up. And I know she won't. And so, but if she would, I would take her from eight cups a day to four cups a day as our first point. So it's definable, it's measurable. She can totally keep track of it. I know she won't give up coffee. So my next recommendation is going to be to try to support her stomach. And that's going to be leafy greens and celery. So I'm going to suggest that she buys, because she lives alone, the smaller boxes of the leafy greens, which are about five and a half ounces. And that she start with, because she doesn't eat a lot of leafy greens, a half a box a day and two sticks of celery a day. Just to see if we can start building that organic sodium to help her stomach lining. Okay, and, um, and then for the couple of supplements, uh, depending on what she was complaining about, which would likely be a touch of arthritis that she's got creeping in, which if she cut out the coffee, we could totally backtrack that, but we can't, so there we go. I would probably keep it very simple for her, and I would either give her alpha alpha in capsules, um, or I would give her the Nature Sunshine Arthritis Formula in capsules, just to keep alkalizing her and supporting her body chemically in ways that would help to reduce the inflammation. Alrighty, so that is where I would start. And I don't think that took me more than five minutes to do the analysis and come up with a list of suggestions, right? So when you know it and you can link it to what you know about nutrition or herbology, it's fast. And you take longer when you're with your client because they don't understand the language that you're using. They don't know the jargon. And so you choose one or two things like with this person, I would probably initially, like I said, focus on digestion. And I would talk about what I'm seeing in here that tells me that the digestion genetically was not strong and how what she's doing with her coffee and her lifestyle is impairing that already low function. And so now we need to try to support it by doing these things with foods and these things with supplements. And then I would describe this is how, this is the result we wanna see. This is what I'm hoping you will see for symptoms as we work on this over the next few months. That we see these symptoms go away, we find that the stomach is feeling like this instead. Okay, so that they have a clear understanding of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what we expect. We get far better compliance when our clients know those things. So, it is time to get registered. Whether you opt for the full package up front or the full package on a payment plan or the course only and or the course only on a payment plan right now, either or it's time to get registered. Registration is closing absolutely tight as a drum Monday evening, 8 p.m. my time. But if you register before then, I can start giving you access to things like the Facebook page and the Q&A page where you can go back and listen to Q&A sessions we've done and your student website. So you can start looking at the materials for the first week, see the recordings, uh, the snippet recordings, uh, because we'll post the actual live recording of the class up as well and the textbook and things like that that you'll need for the first week. So I encourage you to hop on over there, get registered and let me welcome you to the class. We will talk to you later, I'm sure, and have a great day. Bye for now.